Welcome to Python 3 Advanced 8, Database Interaction. In this video, we'll be looking at database interaction with Python. Every video of all slideshows and code available in the description. Some quick preamble. As this tutorial is all about interacting with a database, knowing SQL, or at least a basic understanding of SQL and how databases work, is necessary if you want to follow along. If you want to work with databases, I highly recommend learning SQL and how it works. Okay, so what is database interaction? Interaction with a database is the connecting to and querying of a database. This could be inserting new data, creating a new table, deleting data, modifying data, or just viewing data. These databases can go on web servers, the local machine, or even database files. We use the SQL language to talk to databases, and we can use Python to send those commands. This is great for programs that need to store data, scripts that manage or clean up databases, scripts that back up a database, and more. Python supports a wide range of database types. Python has written a standard for how database modules should communicate with the database. This means that all of the different modules that talk to certain databases all have the same methods. Some of the supported database types are MySQL, MSQL, Gadfly, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, SQLite, and many more. Let's quickly have a look at the main methods we use for database interaction. Firstly, the connect method. This is the first method we use when we want to talk to a database. The connect method is usually the only method that will have differences from other modules. Sometimes this method will take an address, a user, a password, and a database name, and other times it will only take the database name. Next, the cursor method. This method will return a new cursor object that allows executing your queries and holds the temporary data. We then have the execute method, which belongs to the cursor object and executes a single SQL statement. The fetch1 method, also belonging to the cursor, grabs the first row of data that is in the current query result. The fetch all method is like the fetch1 method, however it returns a list of lists of the current query result. The commit method belongs to the connection object and saves any changes made to the database in the preceding queries. The rollback method rolls back any temporary changes made in the preceding queries, pretty much the opposite of commit. We then have close which also belongs to the connection object, and it safely closes the connection. Finally, we have execute many and execute script. These methods execute multiple queries on the database. One is a parameter based, and the other is a single script. We'll have a look at this in one of the examples. Okay, now let's get ourselves set up. We're going to use SQLite as it comes with Linux and it's simple to install and use. SQLite stores all of its contents in a single file. Okay. So to install SQLart 3, we're going to come over to Ubuntu here, and we're going to do our normal sudo apt-get install SQLite3, and then run it. It'll ask for your password, and then it'll go off, fetch the uh, package, and install it. It's already installed on my machine, so as you can see, it's said it's up to date. Once it's installed, we can quickly create a database by running SQLite 3 and giving it a file name that doesn't exist. So SQLite3, and we'll call our database test.db. And that'll run and it'll create the database. And then we get this SQLite prompt, which allows us to start enter entering SQL statements. So let's just check what the SQLite version number is. So select and we want sqlite underscore version close brackets and we put a colon on the end to terminate the sql statement we run that and we'll get what our sql version is our sql lite version is sorry so 3.8.2 cool then once we've done that we can exit by doing full stop exit all right, and we're back to the prompt. Now let's clear it. All right, now that we have a database set up in our local directory, we can continue on. Okay, onto some code. Let's create a basic program that just prints out the version of the SQLite database. Let's call it dbtest.py. Okay. Now let's create our file, so vim dbtest.py. And the first thing we're going to want to do is import SQLite. So import SQLite3 
and now we'll define our define our and now we'll define our main function. So def main, and then we want to create our connection. So we're going to call call our connection con, and that's going to equal SQLite three dot connect, and we're going to connect to our test dot db and that's in our local directory okay so now that we've created our connection we can get our cursor object to start ex executing sql so we'll call our cursor cur that's going to equal the connection dot cursor all right now that we've got a cursor we can start executing uh, sql commands so cur dot execute and we'll execute uh, select SQL underscore version so the same as before and then we'll close it off and that'll run the command and it'll terminate it if it isn't already terminated cool so now that we've executed that command we need to get the data back so let's create a variable called data that's going to equal our cursor dot fetch one so we're going to fetch the first result in the table that's returned and because we know that it's only going to return the version number then there's only going to be uh, that one row all right cool now that we've got our data uh, we can print it out so print data and then once we're done we can close our connection so connection dot close and that's our main function written let's do our if main name is equal to main and we're going to run main all right so that's that done let's right quit and now we can try running it so python 3 db test dot pi and we get the version number 3.8.2 out. Awesome, it worked. I'll give this a clear. Okay, let's modify our Python file to create a table of pets and their prices. We'll use some exception handling to make sure that we don't break our database. Okay, so Let's come back over and we're going to modify our file. So vim db test.py. And we're going to do some error checking. So we're going to open up a try statement. So we're going to do try. And then we're going to move everything inside of our try. Everything that deals with a database. So all of our execution, our data fetching. And we'll also do our print. And we'll leave our close out because that's going to go in our finally. Okay, so now that we've got all that, let's do an accept. So if there's an error, so accept. And we're going to check specifically for SQLite 3 dot error. Alright, so if there's an SQLite error, then we're going to uh, if con. So if there's a connection, then we're going to print out error rolling back all right and after that we're going to do our con so if there was a connection we're going to roll back any changes that were made so that we don't ruin it ruin our database okay now we've done our accept let's do our finally so finally and now finally we're going to do if there's a connection, then we're going to close the connection. All right, so we've got some error handling in there. Now let's start putting our data in there. So instead of our select SQLite version, we're going to input our table creation. So let's uh, create table, and we're going to call the table pets, and inside that we're going to have an ID, which is an int. We're going to have a name, which is text, and we're going to have a price, 
which is an int. All right. So once we create our table, uh, we can start putting things into it. So we'll do our cursor dot execute, and we're going to insert into pets the values uh, one is going to be a cat, and we'll do price of 400 and we'll close that off and we're going to add another uh, three different values so we're going to add a dog a rabbit and a bird so I'm going to speed this up because it'll take a little bit to type out All right, now that we've got our values inserted into our table, we want to commit the changes that we've made to our database. So our connection dot commit. All right, now that we've committed our changes, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get some more data to print out to make sure it all works. So our cursor dot execute, and we're going to execute uh, a select statement. So select star, so select all from pets. So we're going to select all of the data in our pets uh, table and then next thing we want to do is fetch all of the data. So instead of fetch one we're going to fetch all. Alright now instead of just printing out data which might look a bit hectic what we're going to do is we're going to go through a for loop. So we'll do for row in data. We're going to print out the row. So that way we'll only get each row on a line. Cool. So that's our file written. Let's save this. And uh, let's give it a shot. So Python 3 db test.py. We run that. We get the output of our table that we entered. So the 1 cat 400, 2 dog 600, 3 rabbit 200, and 4 bird 60. Cool. Okay, so now what we can do is we can test our error checking. So let's see if we run it again. It'll try and create the pets table again and insert uh, the same values into pets. So let's give it a shot and we get error rolling back. So our exception handling has worked and it's tried to put in a new table that already exists and it's errored and it rolls back any changes that may have happened. Cool. Okay, now let's look at making multiple queries. The Python database standard allows to make multiple queries using the methods execute script, which takes a string of queries separated with a semicolon, which if you've worked with SQL before will be quite familiar. We are also provided with the method execute many, which takes a tuple of tuples to use as data in a string template. Okay, let's modify our code again. This time we'll insert all of the data with one query. We'll also add some extra data in using the execute many method just so we can see how it's used. Okay. So I'll come back across here and let's edit our file. So uh, vim db test.py. All right. Now, instead of our executing uh, a bunch of commands here, we're going to create a script. So Let's do our cursor dot execute script. And inside this script, we're going to use a really long string. So to do that, we're going to do triple quotes. So quote, quote, quote. And then we're going to write some SQL. So we're going to do drop table if exists pets semicolon. So if the uh, table pets already exists, we're going to drop it. All right, now we're going to create our table pets with the ID as an int, our name again as text, and our price as an int again. 
All right. Now that we've created our table again, we'll insert uh, two pieces of data like we did before. So we can just bring these back up. So delete this. Ah. All right, so we've got our two pieces of data that we're going to put in. I'll put ending statements to that. And we can end off our SQL script. Cool, so we've got an execute script now. Now let's create uh, some extra data to put in using a tuple of tuples. So we'll call it pets, and we'll make that equal to a tuple. And in the first tuple, we're going to have our values 3. And we're going to have the string uh, rabbit. And that's going to cost uh, 400. Actually, no, it's 200, wasn't it? There we go. And then do a comma. And next one is 4. And it was the bird. And the bird was 60. Close that off, comma. And we'll add one more in this time in slot 5. And we'll make it a goat. And goat can be 500. Right, and we can close off our tuple of tuples. Cool. Now we can remove these execute script, uh, execute uh, lines here. And we can input our execute many. So our cursor dot execute many. And inside our execute many, it takes a template and then a tuple of tuples. So we'll use insert into pets the values and open it up. And we'll do a question mark, comma, question mark, comma, question mark our template. We'll close off the string, comma, and then our tuple of tuples, which we called pets. All right. Now that'll execute all of the value for all of the values inside pets and add them into our database. Now we commit and we can leave the rest as it is because we want to fetch everything. So we can right quit and save this. So we've got an ex example of our execute script and we've got an example of our execute many. So we'll right quit and we'll give it a shot. So Python 3 db test.py and oh, we've got an error uh, rolling back. Let's check it out. Um, ah, there we go. Create table pets. It's creating the wrong table. There we go. All right, sorry about that. I just had a bit of an error. error. Uh, I forgot to remove one of the end brackets off the SQL statement in the execute script. Whoops. Anyway, back on schedule. Let's give it a run. And we can see that it adds all of it to our database. And if we run it again, it'll keep doing it because we drop our table at the start of our script. Cool. Some notes to keep in mind is that most databases have their own module. However, this code should work on all of them. Only the connect method might change. When executing statements, avoid using the percentage operator for inserting variables into your strings, as it can be abused. Rather, just put the string into a single tuple and use the optional parameters for parameterized queries. I hope you now have an understanding of how to talk to databases using Python. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Next, we're going to cover C extensions. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.